Hello hey guys, it's Lee here. Welcome to iMind Blocks. In today's video, I'll be showing you the Grin++ wallet for Windows. So one of the biggest problems with Grin over these past few months, or really since the uh, the initial start of Grin, was the lack of a Windows wallet. There's previously a Linux wallet, but it's really complicated to use. So this finally solves that problem. So we are using the Grin++ wallet. So to get started, and I'll take you through the whole process, you wanna visit this website. I'll put a link in the description. So it's the Grin++ GitHub. And from here, you can download the Windows installer. So I'm currently using version 0.5.4. And like I said, that's obviously for Windows. Uh, it's worth noting that there is also a Mac version as well, but I've not um, tested that. So you want to download and install that. It's pretty much the same as any normal sort of installation. So I'm not gonna go through that in this particular uh, video. Then once it's installed, you'll see a, a desktop icon on your uh, desktop, of course. And uh, from there, you can kind of get set up with the initial uh, installation. You'll see I've also used and tested the Grin Purse Wallet. That's also a very simple and easy to use wallet, but it's not as uh, fully featured as the Grin++ Plus Plus, uh, wallet. So for anyone that does want to get started with uh, Windows and Grin, then I would recommend the Plus Plus, not the Purse Wallet. So once it's on your desktop, you just uh, obviously double click the icon, get the program up and running, and then you will see a startup like this. When you um, start the wallet for the very first time, you will see uh, two firewall um, permission options. So one is for the Grin node and one is for the Grin++ wallet. So you need to allow both of those um, activities to go through. Then on the bottom left hand side, you'll see this status. It will say um, synchronizing and eventually it will say running. Uh, don't worry about the inbound connections too much. Just make sure that you've got um, plenty of outbound connections. And then what you should see is down the bottom is that all of these numbers basically uh, equalize. So headers, blocks, and network. What you should find is that the headers and network are slightly head, but um, after a short period of time, your blocks should also be on the same number. Then that means that your wallet is kind of um, synchronized with the network and ready to kind of get started with. So what you want to do first is create a new wallet. So you press that button and then it's gonna ask us for a few options. So the first one is a username. So you don't normally have to do this on a lot of wallets, but on this case you do. So we enter a username and then we enter a password. So you want to make a note of these um, because they're not restored or um, saved anywhere. So make a handwritten note of your details, so your username and your password. Then click on create account, which will take us to a seed generation page. So it's gonna look a little something like this. Again, you want to manually handwrite these uh, down. So I'm gonna take a note of these very quickly uh, because you will be asked to verify it in the next section. So we click on next after we've carefully wrote down all of these, so there's 24 words in total. We click on next, and then we're gonna see a uh, part where we have to kind of uh, verify what we've just recorded effectively. So we're gonna do that quickly now. And uh, you guys, I'm just using this obviously for demonstration, so don't use the same words, or uh, I think that I'm uh, leaving this unsecured or anything like that. Okay, so we just have to fill in the blank. So we've done that with uh, five words filled in the blanks so and now we've got the total tool and it just confirms that we've made a manual note of this so we're not gonna lose it in the future. So keep that in a safe and secure place and click finish. Okay, so you can see here, this is the basic wallet interface. So I'll just show you now with a live account what it looks like to send and receive uh, transactions. Okay, so I've just re-logged back in with another account. So one of the cool features about the Grim Wallet, apart from one that actually works on Windows, is that you can have multiple uh, user accounts. 
So each individual account has a separate username and password. So you can create multiple um, accounts and logins, um, just like you would like a, a normal desktop login, but you can do it in this case for wallet stuff. And that's quite a useful feature. Uh, when you want to log out, if you just press your username and then you can go to the log out option and uh, re back log in with a separate account or the same account if you wish. So this is the main uh, interface. You can see here we've got a spendable uh, balance. That's my current Grim balance. Uh, a few main options you can send, receive, or finalize. So I'll just talk you through uh, the different options on how to, to use the basics of the wallet. So if you want to send an outgoing traction, transaction, you're obviously going to need um, a current balance at least. So you click on send, and you've got a few different options for sending. So you've got the file option, a, a URL option, or the green box um, option. So just to quickly talk you through the different options, the file option is effectively you create a custom transaction file. You send that off to the person, they sign it and return it back to you, and then you have to confirm it. So it's like a three part process. Um, most people probably won't be doing that. A lot of people I expect will either be using a URL, the HTTPS uh, option or the Grimbox option. So for the URL, the HTTPS option, all you need to do is you set your amount and the address that you're sending it to. So this will typically be an exchange address or a IP address of your or friend, colleague, or whoever you're sending it to. So you just enter both those details there and send. The person at the other hand would need to either have a proxy relay to uh, receive the transaction or they need to have their wallet open and ready to receive that inbound transaction. The third option is the grim box option. Basically, it's more uh, like a typical um, crypto address that you're more familiar with. So again, you enter the amount and you enter the grim box address, which looks like more like a regular um, crypto coin address. And obviously you can send that onto the network. When it comes to receiving, the receiving process is really much simpler than it has been for other previous wallets. So you click on the receive button. And again, you've got um, a couple of different options. So you can receive, um, like I say, that, that file transaction, which we talked about when we were sending it. Like I say, that's a three part process. You have to send it, the person signs it, sends it back to you and you confirm it. The most popular option, again, will be the URL option. So what you see is this URL here or address here. So this changes for each time you open up and reload the wallet. And effectively this address here, it works like a relay. So for example, if you're withdrawing funds from a pool, you would say you go to your, your withdrawal or your payouts and you enter this address here. This is, acts like a relay. It's gonna go, so the fund is gonna go from the pool. It's gonna go to this uh, website and then it's gonna come to your wallet. Uh, the reason for this is basically it helps uh, to keep your details private. So rather than you sharing your IP address with a pool or a an exchange, you can use it via this kind of this relay system. So I have tested it with my own uh, personal transactions from a pool, and it worked very well. Um, I'm not concerned about any privacy or you know stealing the funds or anything like that. So that's for most people. That's the most common way you'll use it to receive your funds. Next option is Grimbox option, which, like I say, generates a more um, typical uh, crypto coin type address. So you would just provide someone with that crypto address and they could send their funds um, to you. The finalize option is used for finalizing those uh, files. Like I said, if you're using that um, option for sending and receiving transactions, you will have to finalize, basically sign off on the file itself. Returning back to the main interface, you have a transactions uh, window. So it's a very simple and straightforward uh, usable uh, dashboard effectively. So you can see here, I've received a transaction yesterday. This is from a pool. So I've got some minor rewards uh, just there. And uh, that was very nice and easy to use and worked well. Previously, um, I'll probably just show you a quick screenshot. I, I tried withdrawing funds from a pool and I tried probably about six or seven times to withdraw those funds to various different exchanges and wallets and I had lots of problems with it. So finally, uh, the Green++ Plus Plus wallet worked really well. So I'm really pleased with it. It's um, excellent. There's not many other options really uh, in this wallet. It's really a, a simple wallet, which is I think is a good thing. So you've just got the wallet interface and you've also got shows um, your peers that you're connected to. 
and that is basically um, it. But that's a really good thing. So this is the Grin++ Plus Plus wallet for Windows. It works really well from my uh, testing experience. I think you guys are gonna get on well with it. And um, so that's it. So that's it, a short and sweet video. Hopefully you guys can get now set up and running with a Grin on your Windows desktops. And um, that's it, so thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.